friends, what's up? It's April. You're probably thinking, uh, where the hell have you been? <laughs> well, I'm a busy lady, folks. No, the truth is I've just been so busy with my new job that I got back in February. And that, along with raising a almost three-year-old daughter, is consuming my entire being. So, that light in my glasses is really annoying. Sorry about it. So, I'm here with what I'm going to be calling the ultimate book video. I kind of got this idea from those really popular booktubers like Hayley Pham and Sarah Caroli and all of those. Is that her name? I don't even know. But basically, I just have so much bookish stuff to talk to you about, I thought I'd just put it all in one video and be done with it. Basically, in this video, I'm going to be wrapping up the last three months of reading, because that's how long it's been since I've done a wrap up. Um, so I'll be talking about every book that I've read in the past three months, which is not much because I'm busy. I think I've read like 14 books in the last three months. Then I have a giant book haul, and then I have three months worth of our crates to unbox. And I'm also gonna go over like whether I hit my monthly reading goals and all that type of stuff and see like where I'm at with all of my physical TBI or if I've managed. I'm not sure I understand. Um, I'm not talking to you. And we're gonna see if I am on track keeping my TBR down or that good stuff. So let's just jump straight in because we've got a lot to discuss. So first, um, starting off with the books I've read in the past three months. So I'm going to be ranking them from worst to best. So let's start with book number 14. The worst book I've read in the past three months was The Quarantine Princess Diaries by Meg Cabot. Yes, this is a real thing. Yes, it came out this year. Yes, I read it. Yes, I regret it. It is essentially an adult continuation of the Princess Diaries series much like the previous book was, Royal Wedding, but this one obviously takes place during the pandemic. Um, this was so cringe, and I think what's really cringy about it is that even though Mia is now an adult, her inner monologue and her diary entries still sound so juvenile and immature. It's like she hasn't grown, changed, developed at all, and it was just really weird. I don't really remember anything that happened in it apart from um, the grandmother just being an absolute mess. Uh, yeah, it was not that good, but it wasn't terrible. So I ended up giving it a 2.5, but honestly, it's probably more of a two. Coming in at, oh no, was it 15 books? I don't know how to count, obviously, because it's not 14 books. It's 18 books. I've read 18 books over the last three months. Okay, so that was number 18. Now coming in at number 17, we have a reread and that is Petals on the Wind by V.C. Andrews. This is the second book in the Dollinganger series, the first book being Flowers in the Attic. You may have heard of it. It's very controversial, controversial, incesty, very wild. Um, so this is the sequel. Like I said, it's a reread because I have been rereading the series to see if they're still favourites of mine and I can tell you now they are not. <laughs> Very uh, different from 2013 me. No, definitely not. This one got a three stars. The first 70% is so boring. I was just waiting for Kathy to get her revenge. Like that was all I cared about and I'm just angry at the way it turned out. I mean she got... but I don't want to spoil it. But anyway, yeah, I, it gets a three stars. That's all I'm going to say. Then I read Small Gods by Terry Pratchett because my bestie Kara and I are buddy reading all of the Discworld novels. Um, and we were up to Small Gods. And this one I really liked um, and appreciated Terry's take on religion. I thought it was very humorous, but it was boring. I gotta be honest, it was boring. So... There were pros and cons to that one, but I ended up settling on a three stars. Then I read A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. I was expecting to absolutely adore this and I didn't. There's just, I've read two Alexis Hall books now and for some reason I just don't vibe with them. I DNF'd boyfriend material and this one was fine. I don't 
really know. And it's been ages since I've read this. So if you want to know more of my thoughts, you can check out my reading booktubers favorite books of 2022 videos because I go way more in depth there. But yeah, this ended up getting a three stars from me. Cannot remember why. <laughs> my brain is currently at 2%. Okay. And coming in at number 14, we have another reread. It's The Last Song by Nicholas Sparks. I was obsessed with this book, obsessed with this movie when it came out. I bawled my eyes out reading it and watching the movie. Like, and this was at the height of my Miley Cyrus obsession. And rereading it, it was just not that good. I mean, it wasn't bad by any means, but it was very heavy handed. Um, the Christianity part, which I, I'd totally forgotten about. I didn't even remember that it was Christian or anything like that. I mean, I don't have anything against religion. Well, I do, but I don't care what religion you practice. Like I respect you. I just personally am not a believer. And this was kind of just like smacking me over the head, like annoying. <laughs> So if you're a Christian, you'd probably like it, but for me, it just was a little bit too much. So yeah, this one got a three stars as well. All right, moving on down, the next best book I read was Barbarian's Hope by Ruby Dixon. I got back into my Ice Planet Barbarians reading because it's one of my favorite series of all time. It's so much fun and I just adore it. However, this one was not one of my favorites. I gave it a three stars. Can I remember anything about it? No, sorry. Okay, coming in at number 12, we have another Terry Pratchett. This is Lords and Ladies. And this one focuses on the witches, which was, it was so great to see them again. Um, their adventures are always so fun, but it wasn't my favorite and it wasn't my favorite witches book either. So yeah, it gets a 3.5. I am still enjoying reading the Discworld though. It's fun. Coming in at number 11, we have another Ice Planet Barbarians book. We have Barbarian's Heart. This one got a 3.5, so slightly better than Barbarian's Hope, but not the best, you know? It was good, but not great. I honestly cannot remember between the two. Like, I remember one was about one of the Sakui women on the planet um, and her mate, and the other one was about Stacy and her mate who was in an accident and got amnesia. Can I remember which one was which? No. Were they fun? Yes. Okay, moving down to number 10. Here's where Flowers in the Attic comes in. The first book in the Dolan Ganger series. Um, if you haven't heard of this, I'm honestly surprised. This, when was this first published? 1979, so it's quite an old one. So if you don't know, the general premise of this is that we follow four beautiful siblings, um, the oldest brother, the oldest sister, and then two twins, a boy and a girl. Um, one day, their dad dies, and they are left with nothing. They have no money, and so the mother decides to get back in contact with her parents, who are millionaires, and to try and get back on their good side because they were estranged. So she wants to get back on their good side because the father, or grandfather, is on his deathbed, and she wants to get in on that will so she can get the money and everything. However, the grandfather doesn't know of the children. So she says, you can just stay in the attic, big mansion where my parents live. Um, it'll just be a day, okay, until I get back into their good graces. A day turns into a week, turns into six months, turns into over three years of them trapped in this attic. It's wild. It's wild. Um, yes, this I originally gave five stars when I read it back in 2013, but this is definitely not a five star read. It's a four stars. Like, it is messed up, but could not stop reading. Okay, coming in at number nine, we have <laughs> The Happiest Man on Earth by Eddie Jakku. Um, Eddie was a survivor of the Holocaust and a survivor of Auschwitz, and this is his story. He lived to... He was over a hundred. He died, I think, a couple of years ago, um, but he migrated to Australia. So yeah, this is his story. I gave this a 
four stars, but I feel really bad saying this. There was nothing that stood out. Like, it's so terrible because this was a real person's life who suffered through tragedy after tragedy. But I just feel like I've read this story a million times. And there was nothing overly unique about his story. Um, the writing itself was very simple. It wasn't flowery, complex, or beautiful. It was just what it was. Simple, telling the story of his life. And I feel absolutely terrible saying that, but it's just the truth. I want to be honest. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, his life wasn't, you know, brutal, terrible. I don't know how to say it. Anyway, yeah, I gave it four stars. Eddie Jaku, great man. Okay, thank you. All right, next we have Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This is a collection of four short stories all surrounding this magical cafe where if you sit in a certain chair, you can travel back in time. But there are rules and you have to get back before the coffee gets cold. Otherwise, you'll become a ghost and you have to live in this cafe in this one chair forever and ever and ever. Anyway, so we follow four different characters and their experiences with time travel in this cafe. And it was just lovely. Um, I don't, also, I don't know why there's a cat on the cover, because I don't recall a cat being in this at all. Anyway, it was wholesome, it was sad, it was lovely, I loved the concept, and yeah. It wasn't like outstanding though, so I gave it a four stars. But definitely I do want to continue on with the series. Alright, next I read another memoir, this one is Sex Cult Nun. This is all about Faith Jones who was the granddaughter of the founder of the Children of God cult. And I fell, I fell down like a cult rabbit hole on YouTube um, the month that I read this. So I was just so intrigued and fascinated. And Faith Jones is an exceptional writer. She really takes you back and like the way it was written was like, say if she was talking about when she was five years old, the way it was told it was told the way a five-year-old would tell it and I just thought that was just really well done and very clever and her story was just fascinating. However, I do wish that we got more about her life after she left the cult. I just want to know more and the sad thing about me is that I want, I wanted to hear about revenge and all of these sick people getting what was coming to them but of course we don't get that because that didn't happen in real life well it did for like one person but that's a story for another day and that's just a sick and twisted thing about me I guess <laughs> not the book's fault but me um so yeah I really enjoyed it um it was very enlightening and disturbing and I gave it four stars. Then I read a graphic novel that I had pre-ordered and that is The Moth Keeper by Kay O'Neill. Um, Kay O'Neill wrote the Tea Dragon Society. I'm sorry, this light is really annoying in my glasses. It's probably really bothering you guys. Is that better? It's not even better. It's the window, it's not the light. <sighs> um, yes, if you haven't heard of Kay O'Neill, they wrote the Tea Dragon Society series, which is probably my favourite graphic novel series of all time. I am obsessed! But anyway, this is their new graphic novel. It's sort of more targeted towards middle grade readers, but it's all about this young girl who gets the job of Moth Keeper, which this village relies on these moths to bring magic to this tree um, that keeps them alive and well. Yada yada yada. So it's a very lonely job because she has to go and take the moths out at night away from everyone else in her village. Um, so it's a very lonely job and one day disaster strikes and all the moths go missing. So they have to find all the moths. It's beautiful and it's not as beautiful as the Tea Dragon Society. I feel like it's, uh, I don't know how to explain it, the lines are a little bit rougher and not as clean um but yeah it's still a really beautiful story gave it four stars but it doesn't just doesn't compare to tea dragon society 
for me. All right, next we have Mysteries of Thorn Manor, a new release this year, which is a sequel novella to Sorcery of Thorns, which is one of my favorite books of all time, which we will be talking about in a moment. But yeah, this is a little novella where something happens and they are magicked and stuck inside the manor. It's really fun. So we get to see all our favorite characters. We get Silas and Nathaniel and it's just, it's lovely, wholesome goodness and I gave it four stars. Next I have a duology that I want to talk about together um, and that is Blade of Secrets and the sequel Master of Iron which I don't own. Um, wow I was obsessed with this when I read it. This is a fantasy all about this young woman who has severe anxiety. Hello I can relate. Um, and she is a magical bladesmith, so she creates magical weapons, and then she ac she accidentally creates like this the most powerful weapon she's ever created, and she creates it for this general. It turns out that this general is super evil, and now she has to take the blade and run for her life to get away from this general who's trying to ruin the world. And it's super lovely and romantic and wholesome and action-packed and wonderful. I gave the first book five stars and the second book 4.5. It's a super solid duology, so much fun, so quick to read, and the audiobooks are fantastic as well. Okay, the second best book I read in the past three months is a reread of Sorcery of Thorns. I wanted to reread this before I read the novella because it had been so long since I read this first book and it definitely held up. It's still one of my favorites of all time. It gets five stars from me absolutely obsessed. Oh, fantasy at its finest my guys. Fantasy at its finest. And then the best book I've read in the past three months is one that I cannot stop thinking about and that is The Book of the Unnamed Midwife by Meg Ellison. Oh, this is a dystopian um, and we're following this midwife um, she was a midwife in the lead up to this pandemic that wiped out like 99% of women and 98% of men so there's slightly more men left than women in the world so this lady decides that she's going to disguise herself as a man and travel um, throughout what's left of I think it's America where she is um, and find women in need of contraceptives and stuff like that because she has a lot um, because she was a midwife because there are more men than women um, the men have sort of taken it upon themselves to capture the women that are left and enslave them as their sex slaves and so they get pregnant and this virus that is going around um, kills every single pregnant woman. So you die in childbirth and the child dies with you. So main character wants to prevent that and crazy shenanigans ensue. Holy dooly. Uh, yeah. Amazing, incredible, show-stopping, wow, I need to read the next books in the series, like, now. Five stars. Incredible. Those are the books that I've read in the past three months. I am in the middle of a book, though, which I will tell you about right now because it is very exciting because it is everywhere at the moment, and that is Fourth Wing. Yes, I am currently reading This Beauty. Um, I am 77 pages in at the moment and loving it so far. At the moment it's like a four stars, but apparently it just gets better and better and better. So I'll let you know how this goes, but now let's move on to the gazillion books I've gotten over the last three months. So we'll start off with physical books that I purchased myself, starting off with pre-orders. So the first pre-order I have to show you was actually an anniversary present from my husband. Um, because it was our fifth wedding anniversary this year, which is absolutely bonkers. So I said, my darling, just buy me a book and I'll be happy. And he did. So he pre-ordered A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon for me. I cannot believe I haven't read this yet. Because Prior of the Orange Tree was my favourite book of 2019, I think it was. Um, yeah, so it's absolutely insane that I have not read this yet. But I just have not had the time. <laughs> story of my life but I'm so excited about this I will definitely try and prioritize this um, on my holidays because I'm a teacher so I get school holidays okay the next book I pre-ordered 
this Barbarians prize by Ruby Dixon because Ice Planet Barbarians is getting repackaged and republished with a traditional publisher and this was the next book that came out. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Like these covers are absolutely stunning. So this one is book number one, two, three, four, five. So I am waiting on book number six to come out. I think it's coming out soon. Not sure when. In the next few months. I'll definitely be pre-ordering that too. And then we already talked about it, but I did pre-order The Moth Keeper and read it straight away when I got it. And another book that I cannot believe I haven't read yet is Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. I signed up for the Kickstarter to get the audiobook, so I have the audiobook just waiting for me. And I have the physical book. Have I read it yet? No. Insanity. Another one I can't believe I haven't read yet. Happy Place by Emily Henry. <sighs> I need to read this. But at this rate, I'm only reading like five books a month. It's a struggle, folks. It's a struggle. For those of you who have full-time jobs and children, please tell me how you do it. The next one I'm so excited to read is The Queen is Dead by Stan Grant. Stan Grant is an Aboriginal Australian journalist and author, and oh, he is just amazing. This is his fourth full-length book out. I've read two of them, five-starred both of them. I have yet to read his latest one before this with The Falling of the Dusk, but I'm hoping to read it this year. And then this one just came out and of course I just had to snatch it up immediately because I want to support Stan in everything, especially with everything that's happened with him recently. If you... Australian you know. On the back this says powerful, poetic, momentous and timely. The Queen is Dead carries an urgent, undeniable and righteous demand for justice, for a reckoning and a just settlement with First Nations people. Amen Stan. And then of course I got Fourth Wing. I was so lucky to snatch up a first edition with the sprayed edges. I ordered it from Amazon at the beginning of May um, and it came. I, I was like crossing my fingers because the picture when I ordered it, it had it like kind of side on so it showed the sprayed edges and then before, just before it shipped, they changed the picture to just this and I was like, oh no, they must have run out. But I was so, so excited when I opened the package and it had the stenciled edges. <gasps> Woo! Okay, next I pre-ordered a couple of things from Barnes & Noble. The first one, well this one, was this a pre-order? I think so. This is the A Court of Silver Flames special Barnes & Noble um, exclusive edition, the paperback. Um, I wanted this because I'm pretty sure it has a bonus um, story that I haven't read yet. Um, and I just wanted it. <laughs> Do I have to explain myself? <laughs> no. And then I also pre-ordered, oh my gosh, I am absolutely obsessed, obsessed with this edition, the paperback of Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Oh my gosh, this is my sixth copy of this book, which is a little, uh, little insane. Um, but I am just absolutely in love with how this book looks, the deckled edges, the cover. Oh, it's just oh, stunning. Then I got the last four books that I needed to complete my Throne of Glass collection for the new covers. So I picked up the Assassin's Blade, Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms, and Kingdom of Ash. So now I have all of them. I'm obsessed with them. Did I need them? No. <laughs> More books that I bought new but did not pre-order. Um, this stunning edition of Jane Eyre. If you didn't know, I collect copies of Jane Eyre because it's my favorite book of all time. And I am obsessed. And it is textured, so everything that's painted on, it's like indented. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely stunning. It's got gold edges. Oh, a beautiful, beautiful edition. I'm so glad that I purchased it to add to my ever-growing Jane Eyre. I can't get that back on. Jane Eyre collection. Next we have... Addicted to You by Krista and Becca Ritchie. I have been wanting to read this series for so long and I was feeling sad so I went out and bought a book and this is the one I chose. Oh, disgusting. I still have the sticker on. Somebody roast me. So this, I got the paperback. I have it on my Kindle but this has exclusive bonus material. So I grabbed it. 
<laughs> this next book I got for free because um, one of the shopping centers around where I live was doing this book swap thing for ages. I, I think they might have stopped doing it. But basically, I took a bunch of books there and you can take books out if you leave books there. So I found The Book Eaters by Sunny Dean. And this just sounds so intriguing to me because it's all about books. It's a gothic anti-fairy tale. Like that is just my jam. So free and in perfect condition. Yes, please. The last things I have to show you are our crate editions. And that is before we get into the three month unboxings. Um, so I have this edition of The Poison Season by Mara Rutherford. This is stunning, absolutely beautiful. I think I might have unboxed it in my last like um, wrap up, but anyway, here it is again. <laughs> Lovely. Um, and I have a discount code that you can use for our crate, so I will leave it in the description if you are so inclined. Um, then we have an Outcrate Junior book, and this one I'm so excited about. It's called The Grace of Wild Things by Heather Fawcett. If that name sounds familiar to you, it's because she wrote the book that's going viral at the moment, the Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies or something like that. The Cozy Fantasy. I really want to read that. But this is a fantastical retelling of Anne of Green Gables. Amazing. Okay, then I have a couple of ebooks that I got. So... I bought Petals on the Wind on Kindle because the audiobook doesn't exist. Why? I don't know. Because the audiobooks for book one, three, and four exist. Anyways, so I got that. And then The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller, the same author as Blade of Secrets. This was on sale for $1.49. So I snatched it up because it's enemies to lovers fantasy. Like, sounds great. Then I purchased three audiobooks over the last three months. The first one was another one that was a daily deal. And this one, Prior of the Orange Tree. I had to snatch it up because, of course, I'm going to reread this for the end of time. And sometimes that may be on audio. Then I also got the audio of Happy Place because I thought I was going to be reading it, like, ASAP. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot to mention this is a signed edition. Booktopia had signed editions. So that's fun. Anyways, um, yeah, so I got the audiobook of Happy Place and I also got the audiobook for Before the Coffee Gets Cold because they didn't have it at my library, but they have the next two, which does not make sense to me. Anyways, those are all the books I acquired. So now let's quickly go over some stats before we do the Outgrade unboxing. This video is going to be a million years long. I'm sorry. So over those three months, I unhauled one book. I only read six books from my physical TBR. Disgusting. And I added 13 books to my physical TBR. Also disgusting. Now I also have a goal to get the series that I'm currently in the middle of. I want to get that number down. So at the beginning of the year I was in the middle of 76 series. I'm now in the middle of 72. So that is going down slowly but surely. Um, now, my TBR, my physical TBR at the start of the three months, so March 1st, it was at 236. Now it is 242. That's not looking good, but it's not too bad because I am at minus 35 for the whole year so far. Okay, you just gotta keep it in the minuses, guys. Okay, now my monthly goals. I was doing Buzzwordathon for all three months. So for the Buzzwordathon in March, it was Secret. So I read Blade of Secrets for that prompt. Then in April, it was Emotions. And I, that's why I thought I was going to read Happy Place for that, but I ran out of time and instead read, that's not it, <laughs> and instead read The Happiest Man on Earth. Then for May, the buzzword was Flavors. So, ooh. So that's why I read Before the Coffee Gets Cold. Then I'm also doing the year-long magical readathon thing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, here it is. So in March, um, I was supposed to read a book over 500 pages. Did I do that? No. So I'm going to count another book that I read in January for this prompt. I'm going to count Babel for that because you can't tell me what to do. Then April was the month-long magical readathon, so it wasn't on. 
Then in May, the prompt was the book finishes on an odd page number before the coffee gets cold. Completed that. Then I had a goal to reread a favorite book from 2013 every month, and I did complete this. So in March, I reread Flowers in the Attic, and in April, I reread The Last Song, and in May, I reread Petals on the Wind. And then I had a monthly goal to get six to eight physical bo books off my original physical TBR each month, and that did not happen. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, time to get into the unboxings. Um, so as per usual, our crate were kind enough to send me these to unbox on my channel. I am so eternally grateful. Love you the most, Alcrate. You are the best. So let's start off. This first box is from February. So I'm sorry if you've already seen these. Sorry. So the theme for February was magic and mischief. So the first thing was a blanket. And I've actually already taken it out. I've been using it. My daughter uses it to go to sleep every night because she loves Alcrate blankets. She loves them all. We have three and she loves all of them. Um, so I'll insert a picture here of this amazing soft blanket. Okay, then we have this stunning journal. But is it just a journal? No, it's a journal cover. So you can reuse it again and again and again. Genius. So this is inspired by the Starless Sea. And it's absolutely stunning. It even has a little pen holder thing at the back and then the pages themselves have little keys on them. So cute. I will be using this until the end of time. Next we have a magnetic bookmark set which is absolutely stunning. I'm obsessed. Um, let me show you. Look at these. Oh my gosh. I love how like one's silver, one's bronze and one's gold. Like what the heckity heck. So they are all quotes by these authors absolutely obsessed okay next we have a letter opener inspired by a darker shade of magic i love it i love it so much i will be using it to open all of my mail from here on out thank you okay oh my gosh it's really hot i have to tie my hair okay then we have the pin in the box and this is one i was so excited about because it's one of my favorite series favorite authors it's inspired by crescent city <laughs> I'm absolutely obsessed with this series of pins that they're doing this year because they open like a book. I just love it. And the book in this box was Ravel by Lissa Mia Smith. Wow, stunning cover first of all. Oh, the end papers? A joke. The book? Another joke. Artwork? A joke. Absolutely beautiful. On the island of Charmant, magic flows like bootlegged champagne and fantasies can be bought for the price of a gemstone. Ha ha. So that is the first box. Okay, sorry, we're gonna have to fly through these because we are running out of time, running out of battery. Okay, so the theme for March was let's rewrite history. So the first thing is this, um, what's it called? Eternal pencil. Someone tell me how this works. How does this last forever? How does it last with no sharpening required? I don't understand, but it's amazing. And it is inspired by Babel. Like, it's so pretty. Oh, absolutely love it. Then we've got this stunning glass tumbler inspired by... something. The Infernal Devices. Oh my gosh, it is so amazing. And the straw, like, it is... Like, it will not spill. It will not spill. Like, this is amazing. I'm obsessed. Then we've got these amazing library socks. Like, are these not the cutest things you've ever freaking seen? Then we've got a book sleeve. We love a good book sleeve. Yes, we do. Um, this is inspired by um, two books. On one side, it's inspired by Deathless by Catherine and Valente. And on the other side, it's inspired by Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. It's lovely. And... Can't wait to use it. Okay, the pin for this box was inspired by Once Upon a Broken Heart. It is so cute. And this is a series that I also am desperate to read, just haven't found the time. Stunning, stunning pin. And the book is Midnight Strikes by Zeba Shanaz. 
This does not have a dust jacket. This is just the cover. Gold sprayed edges. Absolutely lovely. The end papers. Holy dooly. Wow. Stunning. I'm very excited to read it. Do I know what it's about? No. Do we have time to go over it? Not really. I'm <laughs> sorry. Okay. The last Alcrate box is the most recent one that I've gotten. So this is the April box and the theme is Relics and Ruins. So first we have this um, story doorway and it's inspired by Lord of the Rings and it is so freaking cute. You just put it on your bookshelf. I'm obsessed. It's so cute. Okay, next is this little pouch inspired by, I think, A Darker Shade of Magic by V. Schwab. It's beautiful. And it's one of those ones that just, like, pops open like this. So cute. Next, we've got these Game of Thrones inspired goblet stones. So basically, um, they are reusable ice cubes. And on them, they have the symbols of some of the houses. So we have House Stark. House Lannister and House Targaryen. They're so cool. I've never seen anything like this, honestly. Then we have an embroidery bookmark kit and I have already given this to my mother to complete because I am hopeless at this type of thing and she loves this type of thing. So here is a picture or a video that I found somewhere on the interwebs of what it looks like once it's complete and hopefully I will have one of my own very soon once my mom finishes it. And the pin for this month I'm absolutely obsessed with because I just reread this book and I love it. This one is Sorcery of Thorns inspired. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? My luck. <laughs> okay, and the book for that month was Silver in the Bone by Alexandra Bracken. I am absolutely obsessed with this cover. Like compared to the original, are you kidding me? Yes. The end papers and the illustration on the actual book. <sighs> Some beachless. Um, I am excited but wary because I don't love Alexandra Bracken's books, but we'll see. If you've read this, please let me know your thoughts. I would love to know. So that is officially everything in this video. I know, I'm sorry it was so long, but we had a lot to cover. So that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sticking with me. Even though I haven't been posting, I know I'm the worst. Hopefully things will get better soon. Love you guys so much. See you guys next time. Bye.